Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this very unique um, but wonderful film. Um, what can people expect if they watch Ennis Main? Um, I think, uh, well, it was described in The Telegraph as one of the weirdest films it can. Um, I wouldn't say that it was that weird, but you have to work. You have to kind of make up your own idea about what the film's about. Um, there is a clear uh, sort of level of, there's, there's a clear line of story that goes through it, but lots of strange things happen along the way. And so I think for an audience, they just have to stop trying to make sense of everything and relax and then let it just happen and then it'll all, all the pieces will start to fall into place. And it's just basically, it's all subjective. It's kind of, there is a story, but there's also stuff that you can interpret in your own way. So. And obviously, you know, your character doesn't have a lot of dialogue. No. So, <laughs> what was your what was the appeal when you first read the script? And you know, I assume you must have seen Mark Jenkins' first film. Yes, yeah. Um, so, was it also the opportunity to work with him? Yeah. Well, Mark's my partner. Oh. So, so from the <laughs> so from the beginning, that was quite good. Although at first, I wasn't sure that I was going to be in it, so I was helping him try to cast it. And I was sort of saying, how about so-and-so? And then I kept saying, you, you keep saying you want a woman in her sort of late 40s, early 50s. Hello! Um, and then he kept saying, no, 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 you can't be in it, you can't be in it. And then I was helping him try and find somebody. Eventually, he just kind of went, actually, yeah, it has to be you. So I was like, like yeah, I had the sort of harmony at home that really worked well. Um, and it is, it, as an actor, it's really difficult to do nothing. And actually... Um, and especially as I sort of spent a lot of time doing lots of stage theatre and I worked with a very physical theatre company in Cornwall called Knee High and it was all really huge, massive, in order to be able to tell a story to an audience who are outside and a long way away. And so to suddenly bring it absolutely down to just thinking a thought, um, it was a real challenge. And Mark's constantly saying to me, less, less, do less, do less. <laughs> and, you know... Obviously, your partner, so um, you have that kind of familiar relationship, but what is his approach as a director? And um, I was he hearing him speak yesterday about how he felt that the sort of idea for this film almost came out of, you know, the making of Bait. So yeah. how do you see that this is kind of an evolution of, of what he started with on that film? Um, absolutely, yeah, I think it is. And like he said, and he did talk about that a lot, the idea that what lots of people saying and suddenly that gives you another idea I think oh well I can push this idea further and further and he's so focused he's so focused on everything that he does so you just have to go with it and trust that everything all his decisions are going to be the right ones and as an actor uh, that's sometimes a little bit you have to obviously tr you have to trust your director and but it's all in their power so because because he direct he writes directs, films, edits himself. Um, he didn't develop this one, but he developed debate himself, how processed it. And so he's got all the power. <laughs> so I thought, well, if it's really, if it doesn't go down very well and people don't like my performance, I can always just blame it on him. Because he often says, you know, films are made in the edit, because you've got all the stuff and then you can just make it in the edit, so. And obviously you're from Cornwall as well, so, uh in terms of your character and her daily life and being in those surroundings, was that something that kind of came naturally to you or did you have to prepare a lot to, you know, just her kind of way of being around the mount, uh, you know, in the kind of rugged landscape and her day-to-day -day routine? No, that's all completely, completely normal and, yeah, and I I love those bits. I was you know watching it again yesterday and love seeing all those bits and seeing the sea and hearing hearing the birds and that's the first thing I noticed when I was here. I heard swifts the minute we arrived. So it, always trying to attach to the natural. I know it was great wandering around and it looks actually there's a shot when there's a really long zoom into the cliff from the other side of a cliff opposite and it looks so perilous. It, it wasn't actually, it was really, it really felt safe, but it looks like I'm like a mountain goat, just like teetering on the edge. Yeah. But no, I, I love it and yeah, completely natural for me. And what were some of the highlights and the challenges of shooting it? It's like we are saying, you know, the stripped back dialogue and having to do not much 
did you find that quite <laughs> grueling at times or what was your experience uh yeah yeah it was and and i suppose that we all want to express ourselves all the time and so and i'm you know i'm very physically demonstrative and and so to, usually to express myself it's usually a big it's a big expression you know either physical expression or facial expression and so then to sort of have to pare it all back down was really really it was tricky and but there were difficult things like going down the mine I was really frightened of being in the mine um, and especially in my socks and a nighty um, uh, and it was you know cold and wet on your feet and stuff it's not actually that cold in there because you're you know you're in the earth and there's no wind or anything so that was yeah that was that was challenging on a sort of a personal level in terms of the fear but actually when you get in there weirdly time just does something really strange and we were down there for an hour and a half and I thought we were there for 20 minutes so it was quite weird mm -hmm. and then the other one was when we did the the, uh, the bit where I float backwards in front of the house when the children are singing and that was sort of like stop frame animation and that, it, that was getting really late it was gone midnight and I was still in my nighty and it was April and I was having to jump up and you know to jump in the air and take another one and take a step back and then jump in the air and I'd, I'd really had enough by the end of it but yeah so yeah actual physical sort of barriers I had to push through and you probably wouldn't class it as an out and out horror but it's definitely disturbing <laughs> or unsettling um, how much of that was apparent in the filming of it or was that something that obviously was much more accentuated in the way that it's edited and put together? I think the filming, it was in the filming because it's, it's even the before the edit you've got the, the atmosphere and the script and you know when it all starts to go wrong and you, you know her routine starts to change and strange things start to happen and the lichen starts to grow. So there is there is a sense of unease you get a strange sort of sense of unease all the way through it and actually and being out on the moor in the middle of the night even though there are loads and loads of people around well not masses because we've got such a tiny crew but sort of like 10 people possibly and you're out on the moor in the middle of the night it's still a bit a bit spooky you didn't want to be the last one there <laughs> and what i also thought the effect of it being sort of you know ostensibly like quite simple in you know what we're being shown sort of the mundane nature of her everyday life. Then when something did happen, like the lichen growing on the yeah. when she touches the stove, it actually makes those moments stand out even more than yeah. they might do otherwise. Absolutely, because you're setting up something you're setting up a convention, you're setting up a clear convention. This is what happens every day, this is what she does every day. And the plant, you know, she writes in the diary and it says no change. So there's no change and we don't know how long she's been there, but it says on the ledger it starts, you know, months before, she's sort of on the fourth page or something. So she's been there a long time and nothing has changed. And then slowly all these little things although we don't know that she might have been had sort of visitation, she might have you know, who knows what happens in the mind when you're on your own and you've been there for such a long time, sort of loneliness and sort of isolation might get to you. But, but there has been no change, nothing out of the ordinary for her. And the minute the, the, the flowers start to change, that's when everything starts to go a bit skewy. And you were saying something interesting yesterday about how the, putting the hand on the stove, that although that seems like a mad thing to do, actually when you think of it from the perspective of just wanting to feel like yeah you're yeah yeah the, you know it's, it's a bit like pinching it's saying oh i'm am i dreaming i'll pinch myself just to make sure it's real she literally has to have that amount of sort of to make herself present because we're all living you know we're not in the present we're all on phones we're all so and she does live in the present you know she's got no other distractions apart from what's on the island with her and so it's it's that moment of her having to just make sure it's all really real and feel and feel present and go okay no 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 I'm not going mad I think she is though <laughs> did you have your own ideas of like the young girl is that like her like looking back at, at when she yeah, was younger or did you yes. have your own sort of narrative that you've yeah I think they were all just like they were sort of yeah visitations from her younger self really so nothing's bright she's not sort of frightened by seeing herself or somebody else being there that shouldn't be there I mean apart from some weird you know the mine is a bit weird because he's new I think she'd probably be quite used to 
having herself around as her younger self because we in our minds we go you know if you've been here when you were 10 you might go oh I came back I was here when I was 10 and I went over there so you sort of have these physical you might have a physical memory of being somewhere so that for her is quite normal sort of having a physical memory if she'd been there as a child and then her christening as well that's her as a baby too although she obviously she was there as a baby but she won't have that memory but to be able to see it and, and also Mark said yesterday that um, he didn't want it to be like another woman sort of like at the mercy of you know things happening to yeah, her. Yeah, she yeah. is very strong. Yeah. She's not sort of a victim, you know, in this situation. So is that also important to the character? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kept, because I kept wanting to go, oh, I want to show more fear. I want to show panic and fear and running like, <laughs> and he was saying, you can't. I don't want that. I don't want her to, I don't want another kind of, movie that looks like you know there's a poor woman who's completely defenseless and being chased and frightened and terrorized by somebody she's got to be you know her sort of hers is a self-inflicted sort of you know mind that's it's all her own thoughts that are making her go a bit strange i think and so yeah i think it's really really important and somebody said to me after the 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 cast and crew screening that we haven't got any films where there's a woman on in on the screen like 90% of the time and a woman in her 50s who hasn't had any work done. <laughs> she sometimes wishes she had had some work done but hasn't had any work done, you know, and that maybe that's maybe, you know, and all my fears about all of that, oh God, but maybe it'll, maybe somebody will look at it and go, oh, that's what I look like, that's okay. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. <laughs> No, and I think also just the way it's filmed and the way it looks, you know, <coughs> it's almost like it was shot in, in the time in, yeah, set yeah, in yeah. the 70s. But there's something kind of amazing about that. You feel like the colours and the textures yeah. is sort of counterintuitive because it's not high definition. But actually no, no. it seems more like you could reach out and touch yeah, it. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? I've got, well, I find that like HD sort of, sort of... Yes, it's sort of too... It's too real, it's isn't it it's too strange and too sort of you feel like they're in your room but they're not really and actually this I think this still gives you that that barrier that you know you're still watching a film you know that it's still but we feel like we're almost in it and just in terms of what you hope people take away from watching it I mean it is incredibly immersive and this may be something that's sort of challenging about you know kind of going through um, the experiences that you know we're watching her go through, mm. but it really sort of captures that the way time can kind of collapse and yeah. the feeling of loneliness, which perhaps even hits home in a different way after the pandemic. We've all yeah, been through, yeah. Where we haven't had events to kind of demarcate where we are. No, time. no, exactly. No, I think that's absolutely right. And that sense of being alone, and, and that sense of going. Lots of people have gone back to nature since the pandemic and taken things a bit slower and. So I think, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. Do you sort of think that people will come out and feel, yeah, like they've had an experience? I really hope so. Yeah, I think they will, even if they don't quite know what it is when they come out. I think if they'll, they'll go home and take it with them and have us and, and be able to see themselves, hopefully, and a sort of a, and a or maybe have more of a um, sort of watch themselves maybe and their everyday life and go oh, yeah, oh look that's what I do every day I get up I make myself a cup of tea I have a cold shower or whatever you know that we have these routines and when they get how we get tipped when they're not quite going right can't have a British person without tea no oh my god and I forgot to bring my tea with me <laughs> I brought my herbal tea, but I didn't bring my Yorkshire. <laughs> so I just, I keep, I'm on the hunt for a really good cup of tea. <laughs> just take your character. Um, and just finally, you know, what does it mean to you both to be here in Cannes with this film? It feels really unreal, actually. We're both really excited. I think we had a bit of a drama getting here. The train track was struck by lightning. Um, as we came into France, it took us, you know, we come up from Cornwall, that takes five and a half hours, then we, and then, so we had to spend a night in Paris, so we only got here an hour before we had to meet Chris and get to here. So, um, it feels quite unreal, and, but we just can't, yeah, we keep going. 
Hey, this is what we're doing. We're here. We're really in Cannes. <laughs> we're really at a lovely meal. We're really swimming in the med. Mm. It is amazing, and you know, and we've brought. I think we might be a director's fortnight one of two, or maybe the only British film. You know, mm. and as a and a Cornish film, and to have come this far is just amazing. Yeah. Can you quickly tell us what you might be working on next? Uh, no, I don't know what I'm working on next at the moment. That's exciting too. I'm doing, oh, I'm doing a theatre show, yeah, yeah, I'm doing a theatre show. I'm doing um, at The Tempest uh, in an amazing outdoor, beautiful garden, subtropical gardens called Trebar, Tree or Treba um, Gardens near Falmouth. Yeah. And it's a big outdoor promenade performance of The Tempest, so I'm doing that. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us and enjoy the rest of your time in camp. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah.